Tchaikovsky, this Russian guy who is known mostly for his large scale works. I mean, if you ask anyone, what do you know about Tchaikovsky? They will mostly tell you that they know his ballet music, like his Swan Lake. Or the pianists, the first thing that comes to their mind is the piano concerto. Yes, full of octaves. That's what you know about Tchaikovsky. And then you know some of the symphonies and you're done. You don't know anything else. Uh, however, Tchaikovsky needed to make some money and he started composing those works. Uh, what are those works? This is a set of 12 short pieces. They're called character pieces and they represent each month of a year. Even though the title is Seasons, it actually is Months. It's the months. So there are 12 short pieces named after the months of the year, and uh, each one has a subtitle which is given by the publisher. Now, who is the publisher? The publisher is a guy... You don't need the names. I don't even remember the name myself. The publisher is a guy who owns a magazine and he asks from Tchaikovsky to write a piece for every monthly issue of the magazine. Yes. So in um, the monthly issue of January, Tchaikovsky writes the work January. The monthly issue of February, he writes... February. And this goes through for a whole year. So in the magazines, in the Russian magazines, you can find those pieces from 1875, each in a different uh, issue of the month. It doesn't mean that he actually wrote them on separate months. You know, he wrote two of them, then he took a break, then he wrote eight of them. He sent them to the publisher, and it was uh, a, a very good source of income for Tchaikovsky because he's not known for his short pieces. He's known for his long pieces. So it is quite challenging for Tchaikovsky to write a small piece, a short piece. <laughs> and um, it is interesting. I first heard this uh, set of... Uh, um, 12 pieces in, um, in a concert in central Athens by a Russian uh, guy. Um, he, was, uh, he was studying at the Moscow Conservatory and he was asked to come and have a concert as a student and he played the whole set and it was fantastic. It was a revelation. That is when I actually first encountered uh, this music and I'm, and I'm very happy to give it to my students. Of course, I, I pick different months every time. Um, so Ellie, with Ellie, we picked August. Um, there are some poetic epigraphs. Oh, I'm sorry, I forgot to tell you that the subtitle given by the publisher for August is The Harvest. And the publisher himself has added a poetic epigraph uh, that uh, talks about harvest. It's from Russian poets. So I'm going to read you an English translation, the short version. The harvest has grown, people cutting the tall rye to the root, put together the haystacks, music screeching all night from the holing carts. So this is the idea of the poem, and it represents a Russian August. Uh, it doesn't represent any random August. So um, here, <clears throat> let's move to the score in detail. <clears throat> I think um, today I have those. Uh, I have this inclination to the timing issues. Uh, I spoke about time timing with Cecilia on her ballad. I spoke about time with uh, Jolly on her. Sonetto. And now it's uh, the time for Ellie to go back to the time issue. Um, such a long story. You see this score. This score looks very simple. I mean, compared to the score for from Liszt, from the sonnet, or the score from the ballad, that it was too busy um, and, and uh, too rich of notes. I mean, look at the score of the... Um, look at the score of the sonnet. Yes? 
This is the sonnet, jolly sonnet. And look at the score of um, Tchaikovsky. So simple, you know, so empty. Uh, but it's so difficult to to play. These are um, these are literally. It's like uh, Mozart scores. So simple, simple, and so clear, but so difficult to interpret. Similar is uh, this work here. Ellie, so many things up <laughs> we covered, and and still I'm finding new things to to say. Um, okay, we have this um, in the beginning. Um, it says Allegro Vivace, so it's it's something vivacious, something lively, and it should be a, pian a piano. Uh, dynamic level. So in the beginning, you have this. Uh, yes, this theme, this motive here, which is two paired notes, a long note. Here you see this is two paired notes, a long note and a shorter note. They come in pairs. So I'm going to play the right hand, just the, the first line. Yes, so this by itself, it's quite poor. The writing is quite poor. It doesn't have any striking melodic line. What is the melodic line? If I, if I just play the, the top line. You can't even sing this. You can't even sing this. There is such rush and such uh, frustration just right from the beginning that it's it's difficult to to remember, like melodically to remember. However, there is this rhythmic uh, challenge that makes it striking, and the rhythmic challenge comes with the syncopations on the left hand. Now, I'm going to play the melodic line um, of the right hand and the supporting tenor line. Similar line, careful with the phrasing, because it's, it's very easy to just play Sorry, with those A-sharps. It's very easy to play like that, but it's not convincing whatsoever. So again, you have the compound double time, the 6-8. So it's 1-2-3, 1-2-3, 1-2-3, 1-2-3, 1-2-3, 1-2-3, 1-2-3, 1-2-3, 1-2-3, 1-2-3, 1-2-3, 1-2-3, 1-2-3, 1-2-3,
uh, her grandma, I don't know where she was, and she went to uh, take a walk in the forest and the wolf was there and blah, 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 the story. But if we read it, all of us, the same text, if I ask you to read the text, we will all read it in a completely different way. The tone of our voice, the color of our voice, the drama in our voice, the breathing, the comas. When you see a coma, when you read, why do you take a breath? We take a breath. Yes, it's the same with music. Consider that these are letters and words and that you need to, to create a sentence and at the end to create a story. And this story will become interesting and convincing through its breathing, through its drama, through the spaces in between your words, through the commas and the full stops and the exclamation marks. It's just that they are not very clearly, you know, spelled out on the score. You just have to find them. Whereas on the text, you see a comma, you take a breath. Now, where's your comma here? No, there's no comma. You need to figure it out. So breathe. You are on the upbeat. Yes? <gasps> Breathe. So fast and feel the breath. Practice, actually practice the breath, the physical breath. Hear yourself breathe. No shame, no harm. Yes? And then it gradually becomes natural. And it gives space and substance and context to your music. I'm going to play it once again, but a bit faster. With the breathing faster as well. <laughs> and that makes perfect sense. Together with the left hand. Not only that, but it also gives like um, a beating feel like as if it's a, like a song with a beat, like there is some drum um, and, in the background. Now, what is the role of this very boring B? I have a B here constantly. I'm so boring. Let's play the B. Yay, we played the B. Nothing important. No, very important. It, it adds. You hear the B here? Yes, so staccato, very nicely uh, put all together. And now that you see that there are so many layers that we, you have already established three uh, layers that are very clear uh, on your text. Of course, there is a lower line to your uh, melodic uh, direction, but the two are the duplication of the melody and the bass. playing wrong notes and then after this is over which is not over it's just the end of the first idea you have this line here on the left hand which leads to an accent and it's the continuation of your melody so your melody doesn't stop here no yes it goes here That's a continuation of your melody. So you need to think of the right hand and then of the left hand. Now the right hand finishes. Keep the sparkle with a nice sparkly staccato. It's all on the score. Lift, lift, drop. Legato, lift, lift, drop. Legato, lift, lift, drop. The clearer are your finger movements, your finger actions, the clearer is the understanding and the reception from the audience. How are your fingers clear? Only if you have clarity in your mental structure. So you can see, you can translate your text 
into movement. Yes, so you have clarity in the structure in your head that makes your finger action clear. I know every single movement of my finger. Staccato, staccato, lift, drop, legato, accent. I know it. Staccato, drop, legato, up, down. Legato, up, accent. So my accent comes from a high drop. And this gives a clarity in articulation. And as a result, this is like a sequence of ideas. The ultimate goal is the perfect communication of the text to the audience. Yes? The right hand here, chords. Um, the top line, the two top voices, nothing important. The lower voice, that is interesting because it comes as a reply to the left hand staccato. And then what happens in bar six, do I have bar numbers here? No, I don't have bar numbers here. Here, um, I'm gonna play the top line. I'm gonna play the lower line here. And then I'm gonna play the top line here along with my left hand. Uh, sorry. So there is a dialogue and some sort of equilibrium between the two hands. Now, there's also this lower line here that I could project this lower line here. And now this is the difference in the understanding of a score and the result of the different interpretations. I find it more challenging uh, to present once the lower line, once the top line, once the lower line, once the top line. I'm, I'm fine with that. I'm happy. It's, it's a bit more challenging because you need to twist the, the weight of your fingers once to the bottom and once to the top. <clears throat> the top line and then the left hand lower line and uh, up and then again the theme yes so visually i see a descending line uh, then I see chordal work with motivic material up and down, and then again the descending line, and then again the chordal um, linear line. Never stop the music. The music should never stop, but don't make it hectic. I mean, when there, there is a reprise here, and the melody begins again, do not actually rush to the melody immediately. Take this slight breath that will even cheat the metronome. You'll be on time, don't worry, but it's, it's different to go there immediately. It's like there is a blur in your thinking. No, it's clearly... It's clear. How do you make it this clear? You lift, you lift higher than you think. Another issue with pianists, you tend to be afraid to keep your distance from the keys. You think that if your fingers are stuck on the keys, you're not gonna lose your uh, piano geography. The keys are stuck there waiting for you. You're very familiar with the positioning of the notes. They're there, just focus your eye on the particular note. Again. Then it's different, it goes up. Why did I stop? Because of dynamics. This is a diff another issue, another major concern that raises the difficulty of the piece. 
So, piano, forte, piano, forte, piano, 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 forte, piano, forte, piano. Okay, fine. D difficult? No. It sounds very easy. So if I ask Ellie, what are your dynamics, Ellie? She'll say very simply, piano, forte, piano, forte. Can you do it? Can you actually do the piano forte? It's this, that's the difficulty. <laughs> On a, I know, I know it's a recording. I know it's a cell phone recording. I know you're missing, we are missing out from your intentions, but make it clear, piano. Piano, accent forte. Piano, accent forte. Piano, piano. Make sure that your dynamics are accurate. And if you think that the level of piano and forte are here, increase the distance. Play softer than you think for piano and louder than you think for forte. If your teachers, if your professors, your instructors, they tell you, oh, I can't hear a contrast. What do you do? You need to make sure they hear a contrast. You sort of distance the range of your dynamics. There are millions of pianos and millions of fortes. I'm sure you can play softer and I'm sure you can play louder. And that is a, an easy way out to make uh, visible or audible the contrasting dynamics. <laughs> Um, then there are some technical difficulties and some rhythmic difficulties. I'm going to um, focus on bar 24, I think. That's the right bar, isn't it, Ellie? <laughs> Tom doesn't have a bar number, here, but here. Here when it starts to ascend again for the like this one, this one. Okay, okay. your um, okay, the right hand here. Remember, what is your time signature? Your time signature is six eight. Yes, so your upper upper hand, your right hand here is not very clearly written as a 6-8. Because if it was written like a 6-8, the beaming would, would be totally different. Like the A would be beamed here with a G sharp, and that would be another completely different section. Yes, like here, you clearly see that it is in 6-8. And you also see that on the left hand. Now here things are getting a bit more confusing. Your left hand is in 6-8 and your right hand is in 6-8, but it doesn't sound that clear. Let me play your right hand here. If I find it on my score. Page turn. See the difficulty in that. This is like written like three fours, but it's a six eight. What does that mean? That instead of playing one, two, three, one, two, three, you have to do that in two. It's like one, two, three, one. Can you hear my foot tapping? I, I need to make it louder because you need to count in two. It's like one, two. One, two, 
and that if you're practicing separately, you just always need to keep in mind that you're doing a six eight, which makes it difficult with the accents and the writing of the left hand. Um, A sharp all the way. makes it even more difficult with the sharps or the accent on the left hand to achieve a constant uh, idea of six, eight. So if I do it slowly. What am I doing? I'll do it once again. you're playing pairs of threes you are actually counting in two so the complications of those accents of the pairing of the writing make the interpretation quite difficult um another important thing is like because there are so many chords and there is such vertical writing we need to be very careful of the way we coordinate the two hands. There, you need to be able to hear a perfect coordination. You cannot, by any means, do things like that. There are no things such like such this written on your score. It's very vertical. You need to feel the sense of beat. coordinate together. Move to the run. This run, killing us the run. Count it. It, yes, it needs to be wavy. It needs to be flowy. It needs to be in one breath, but count it. You are in six. So one, two, one, two. Make sure you know where is your one and where is your two. This is your one and this is your two. This is your one and this is your two. This is your one and this is your two. Mm. Accent this when you practice and make the turn across. Practice this awkward fingering. It's two, three, five, and whatever you want on top, four, three, one, and then there is crossover. But practice this separately. It's then it's one thing. Me do me. Practice that separately. Where is mi do mi? Mi do mi is here. So all together, this is. So the whole thing, let me find the fingering. I'm playing wrong notes, but you get the idea. And then when you go faster, I'm not gonna make this because I haven't practiced this. One thing, but before you, because the tendency is, oh, I want to play this piece because I hear it on YouTube, whenever Spotify, wherever Spotify, it's lovely, it's lovely. And you rush to learn the notes and you rush to learn the tempo and without constructing, you know, your building, you are rushing. It's not personal, it's just a, a general comment. You are rushing to make this fast, nice and clear, but you need to place all of your tiles accurately so that the construction is eventually built. Otherwise, it's a Jenga. You know Jenga? The, the, 
the table game. Yes, it's Jenga. Then the tiles start falling apart. And that's a disaster. So you reach all those wonderful, all those octaves, which are very nicely, but still they are very rushed. Where are my octaves there? You can see my octaves. You have to think. to where not end and the octaves still you have your themes which you have been building since the beginning left hand lower line lower line again and this all uh, builds up very nicely up to the top and it's of the first part it's not the end of the piece yes so when you make the um, ascending line coordination staccato less pedal just when wherever it's needed it's it's not blurred it's not blurred it's crystal crispy just in the beginning and then one two how many octaves it's not the end, don't make a huge end. The end is exactly the same, but later on. Let me admit a couple of people here. Thank you. So you're playing on one, two, three, four. All in one. Don't make pompous statements because there, there is still the, the, the music is still on. I'm going to do this once again in order to show you the transition to the B section. Here it says Dolce Cantabile. On my edition, it says Tranquillo. Okay, so one, two, three, four. So the big sound is over. The pompous statements are over. Remember the poem? The harvest, the people singing on the carts in the evening. So this tranquilo section takes me to this evening mode. Now, it's quite demanding to make the transition from something very loud to something very soft, subito, uh, without a rest. That's why most people are taking their time. And that gives them time to, to make the transition smoothly. No, the challenge is to do it as fast. How do you do that fast? How do you do that fast? Technically, off the pedal. Short pedal. There's no need for long pedals. It's an, it's an eighth note. Off. <gasps> what did I do? You took a breath. <laughs> it, I took a huge breath that gave me the time to make the move and to physically, like my body, to prepare for the actual at finger action. Otherwise, you don't know how to drop. You're dropping too loudly, too aggressively, or too softly. And you're coming to this beautiful tranquilo section. Tranquilo doesn't say slower. Yes, neither does dolce cantabile. That it is implied that it should be more relaxed. It doesn't say you're slower. You are still in allegro vivace, tranquillo. And gives you the room to make some more expressive uh, sort of um, ideas, to present your more expressive sort of qualities. So if you are in the same tempo, you would go... Now, immediately, just from the writing, the music is tranquilo. Where are the, all those chords? Where are the fortissimi? Nowhere. Piano. Very simple, linear writing, 
single notes, long notes held by default is a tranquilo. How do you establish that with nice, close finger work? Not jumping around. Clear sense of rhythm. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. Melody on the left hand. Beautiful. Why? Coordinated hands. Clear conception of harmonic qualities. Clear conception of harmonic qualities when you play the notes correctly. And close. And careful. Marcato. Marcato, not the right hand, Marcato. Marcato, the, the left hand, the melodic line on the left, yeah? Risky business, the slur. The slur is here. In, in my score, I have a slur for two bars and another slur for another two bars, which leads you to this structure. Stop. 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 Bad music. One thing. One thing. Plus the crescendo. And then breathe. Is the music there? The level. I'm just gonna scroll it down. Okay. What happens here? It's bar 83. Melody, mm, mi, la, si, la, la. And then left hand. Fa, si, do, si, si. Separately. Practice separately. <clears throat> Continued. This all together should be made in the nine slow left right left right right stringendo diminuendo ritenuto to prepare Now, I need to stress out the difference between accelerando and uh, stringendo. Accelerando is the obvious acceleration of music. It's like going gradually faster. But stringendo is a very compressed accelerando. Yes, it, it, it is actually a very quick and compact accelerando. It doesn't mean that you need to go very, very fast because you need to remember your tempo indication, which is a tranquilo. It just shows the agitation and the necessity to reach a climax, which is then resolved. And the better you build this stringendo, I'm oh, sorry. The ritenuto is only one bar.
Are we on the same page? Yes, here. This is the section I'm talking about. Okay, so um, that's on top, yeah? Here. Still espressivo, piano, left hand, discussion, right hand, left hand, and crescendo. But you're beginning on piano and string gendo. Minuendo and finally Vitanuto <gasps> sigh. And of course, since it is the repetition of the opening theme of the tranquilo, you can play around with it. You can go softer. You know, if, if you visualize this and you're like, okay, this is summer evening and everything is quiet and nature is peaceful. And we've heard this in the beginning. Practice the two versions. This is the, the beginning of the tranquilo. And this is the second tranquilo. The night is, you know, uh, not in its beginning, but it's like really, really late. And the people after their morning harvest, they're exhausted and they cannot even now talk to each other. They're just lying on the haystacks. So it's like, shh, and lazier. And here you can take more time and do all your espresso. Do not forget to show your bass line. Do not forget to show that. So, left hand, etc., etc. It's very same. Now, another difficult section is the transition back to the theme. So, here is your theme. So, the transition. <clears throat> Let's take it from uh, here. Okay, this whole thing is like a transition. Uh, this urgency to go a tempo. Another very difficult point here, but there is plenty of time after the ritenuto to begin feeling, feel the urgency and back to your original tempo. So. But you have another one to go. So while you're playing, Ritenuto, think, and, and begin. And build it up and build it up. Sorry, need to admit people in. Great. And build it up, build it up, all the way, the same clear coordinate, any coordinate. And finally, you reach the end, the top, this is it. <laughs> Here, you can start taking time. It's the end, it's a big closure. Whatever is the notes and lower and all on B. You can take your time and breathe in between. It's like a... Make a final statement. And so on and so forth. Thank you. Any questions?
I'm okay. You're fine? Yes, thank you very much. Oh, how lovely to see so many people.